How does biodecoding approach genetic diseases, first in children who are born with the disease? Bien, donc merci pour, euh, pour ta question. Euh, donc c'est un secret pour personne. C'est une évidence, eh bien, d'observer que. It's no longer a secret. It's obvious when we observe today's children how they can use technology instantaneously with ease and very quickly, whether it's cell phones, computers, etc. It's more difficult for an older person to deal with such devices. It's as if a child comes to life with an inheritance, a heritage, a learning. I think that's how reality is. The real life starts at birth. It's just the aerial life, the respiratory life. Later comes eating autonomy. The child can leave his mother's breast and decide to eat on its own. So there are several beginnings in life. Aerial life at birth, biological and cellular life at conception. But our life programs, what is uploaded at the time of conception, meaning our genetic codes, what we call today epigenetics, reveal the input of our experiences, the importance of our environment on our genes, and how these genetics will be transmitted to future generations. So the aerial life starts at birth, the biological life starts at conception, but our life programs which allow us to be in interrelation with the external world, to react with the world, since it's the function of the genes to build our proteins. These programs start way before conception in our parents, grandparents, and so forth. That's why today's children seem to have been in this world before they were born. They gained a knowledge through their parents, through their parents' place of living, through their parents' experiences. So researchers like Michel Jouvet talks about the importance of the rapid eye movement sleep of dreams. During this phase, the nucleus of the cell opens up and the information does not only go from the nucleus to the outside, but also from the outside to the inside. Professor Jouvet has been talking about this since the 60s. It's been over 50 years now that he's been talking about this, but not a lot of people have paid attention to it. So he brought this to light, that during the REM sleep, during our dreams, the information goes from the outside to the inside. It reprograms the genes. In his last books, Ernest Rossi talks about hypnosis, which can also reprogram our genes. So through therapy, the genes can change, and that's what he proved on himself as he is recovered from a serious disease. So parents, ourselves, everybody, experience situations during the day and at night when we sleep, there's a genetic reorganization which makes that we evolve, we adapt to an ever-evolving world, we evolve with it. So life starts before life, almost. Our life starts before our life. Our programs are already there, which allow us to come to life prepared, equipped with skills and capacities. We're not a blank book. It's crazy to think that a newborn is a blank book, an empty hard drive. It's a sort of delirium, unreasoning, which doesn't take into account observation. And we realize that genes are not the cause of genetic diseases, but the consequence in itself of the transgenerational events. The consequence means that there's something before the gene. Darwin talked for a long time about adaptation, evolution of survival. 
We also talk about mutations and that the most adapted genes remain. So the gene is not only the cause, but also the consequence of something else, something that happened earlier, which makes the gene the support of this information, this learning. This way, it will allow the newborn to adapt to his environment, which has changed for thousands of years. Here's a simple example about a genetic disease called colorblindness or Daltonism. People can't see some colors or they see them differently. It can be green, red, brown, yellow, anything. They can't see one, two or three colors or they perceive them differently. The example is about a man who can't see red. He never saw red. Why can't he see red? Why is his gene defective and not mine, yours or anyone else? Why? What is the information that it carries? What is the usefulness of this pathology? Because in biodecoding, the foundational hypothesis is that the symptom has a usefulness at some level of reality. At another level, of course, disease is a scandal, which we want to get rid of. But at another level, the symptom has its coherence, its logic. The grandfather of this colorblind man was a Russian man who had seen the horrors in the beginning of the last century when communism invaded the old country with its red flags, assassinating people. There were rivers of red blood in the city. And this grandfather fled his country and came to France. He fled red, fire, communism, blood. He comes to France, becomes a taxi driver, and because of all his suffering, he drinks wine, red wine. He has wife and children, and the children see their father drink red wine, hear him yell. So the color red in the family memory is horror. Red is really death, crime, violence, losing everything, an alcoholic father. In French, we say, I can't see him in color to say, I can't stand him. So what is the solution? The solution is to not see red anymore. It's the lie of disease. It's the role of disease to not be in contact with the stress anymore. So if there's no more red, there's no more stress. I can't see blood anymore, the communist flags, red wine, etc. So we are in the biological intelligence and not in the mental intelligence. For the mental, it's stupid. It's not because you can't see red that communists have not killed the Tsar and the people. Biology has its own intelligence, its logic, which is immediate, simple. So you can't see red anymore, therefore no more stress. It was an example of genetic disease, which I decoded with his mother. I never met her son. I met the mother during a seminar and she asked me how I would decode this disease. I told her, I don't have the answer, but you have the answer since it's in your family. If I had met the child, what would have happened? A colleague of mine had a colorblind patient who recovered from Daltonism. I'm not saying that healing happens every time, but I share what happened. Like you said in a previous interview, there's a possibility of healing. Yes, we never know. We're on this path of consciousness. Will happen what should happen.